My name is Keisha King. I'm the owner of Chop Chop, a mobile salon and barbershop that provides multicultural beauty and grooming services for live events, luxury weddings, and mobile tours. I started my entrepreneurial journey four years ago, experiencing the highs of being on television, winning competitions, and signing major deals, to losing thousands in one day, selling my car for money and racking up thousands in debt. I'm sharing my journey and lessons learned to encourage, support, and prepare the next entrepreneur. I'm no expert, I'm not a millionaire, and I don't know everything. But what I do know is that there's so much more to life than working a nine to five. So watch as I explore. You know, I was just thinking about how we got started with Chop Chop and the events that we had to do to build our name and our brand. And a popular way for startups to build their name is by doing trade shows. I think trade shows are excellent. I think that they can get you potentially in front of the right audience. But there's some research that needs to go into the trade show before you actually sign up and spend some money. So one of the mistakes that I made was being a part of trade shows just because. Not really understanding, okay, who was going to be at the trade show, how many attendees were expected at the trade show, uh, how much do the attendees have to pay, because if they're paying to get in, they may not want to pay to purchase products that I'm selling. And, by the way, am I able to even sell products at the trade show? Because some trade shows, you can't sell products while you're there. Um, so, I, I spent a good amount on trade shows and didn't see any return. So just make sure that when you decide and sign up for a trade show, you are asking the right questions before, you know, transferring that money out of your account. Make sure you really understand the nature of the trade show. Also, once you decide to uh, be a part of a trade show, make sure you know how you're going to capture leads. What does that mean? How are you going to get the names and the email addresses of the people that stop by? Are you going to have a sign-up sheet? Are you going to have some kind of text to join? But you got to get something out of it. You don't want to just go to a trade show and show up. <laughs> that was a mistake I made a couple of times. Last but not least, what's really, 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 really important and where I made a mistake was trying to do too much too soon. So like I told you guys before, if you watch some of the other videos, you understand that I came out of corporate America and started my business. Well, when you're in corporate America, everything is lavish, it's big, it's sexy. You know, the website, it's, it's, it's user friendly. It has all kinds of designs and banners and all that kind of stuff. And as an entrepreneur, you know, I want my stuff to look good. So, you know, I was thinking I needed to have the same level of uh, technicality and expertise and all that kind of stuff. But I spent way too much money on my first website, especially when you don't even really know if what you're going to do is going to work. You don't really know if the product is what people want. You don't know if the service is actually what people want. A lot of times when you're starting up a business, you're going to have to make tweaks. You're going to have to make uh, transitions based on demand. So you don't necessarily need to spend three, four thousand dollars on your first website. Sometimes it's good to just put up a landing page and collect email addresses and kind of have a, a pamphlet or a brochure of what you offer so people at least know who you are and what you what you um, provide. But it's not really necessary to spend so much money on your first one. Then when you get more information after a year, you realize, okay, this is what I'm really gonna do. That's when you go and you refine it. And if it makes sense, you spend a little bit more on your website. The other thing is, I didn't know jack about websites. I didn't know about meta descriptions and tagging and alt tags and all that kind of stuff. And so with me not knowing that, my web designer, you know, they could design it and not do some of the things that are important to drive traffic to my website. And I didn't even know that those things were lacking. So it's really important, you know, they say know enough to be dangerous. You don't want to start, you know, doing so much research that you're consumed with that. You don't have to be an expert in websites. 
but you do need to know enough to be dangerous. You need to know enough to be able to kind of check and make sure that the web designer is doing what they need to be doing and to make sure that, you know, if you're going to spend all that money on the website, you are actually creating a website that people are actually going to visit. Next time on The Flip Side with Keisha King, I'll give you my tips and tricks on how to be an effective and efficient solopreneur. While wearing many hats, it can get difficult to handle all the aspects of running a business by yourself, but there are definitely ways to make it easier and to ensure that you're being effective. So stay tuned for next week's episode on The Flip Side with Keisha King.